Hello and welcome to this open SAP course, Get Coding with Snap. My name is Jadga Hügle and over the next two weeks, my colleague Jens and I will show you how to program various small projects such as video games, artwork and animations. We will also give you some exercises to help you develop your skills by yourself. Before you start programming, you'll need to have access to the Snap programming environment. We've explained how to do this in our course announcement, so when you're ready, take a look. You'll find it at the top of the OpenSAP screen under Announcements. In this first unit, I'll give you a quick tour of the SNAP interface and then we'll program our first project. Are you ready? Well, let's get going. In this video, I want to show you how the SNAP development environment works at the beginning. So to get to the environment, you can either um, run SNAP locally if you downloaded it, as explained in the announcement, or you can run it in the browser by going to snap.berkeley.edu and then you will get to this website. You can click on Run SNAP Now then and you will get directly to the development environment. In SNAP, you program by dragging and dropping these chunks of code that we call blocks together in the script area. So for example, I can let my sprite here on the stage move 10 steps whenever I click this block and execute that script. I can also stack multiple blocks together. When the white line appears, they will just snap together. So now the sprite will move and then turn. In the development environment, you can find more options that we will explore later during the course. Our first project will be a flower that we're going to stamp. For that, we will draw a costume. Each of your sprites that you can program can have a costume. Right now, we have the turtle, which is this arrow, but we can give it any costume we like. In this case, we want to draw one. So for that, we click on the paintbrush to open the paint editor. When you are in the paint editor, you can choose from shapes that are already provided or you can just freeform draw something. And I just want to draw a petal for my flower that we're going to stamp. So I choose blue as my color and I want the pen a little bit thicker. So I adjust the brush size. Let's do 10, for example, and then I can draw my petal. So this is how it looks like. And then I can fill it with another color by clicking on this um, filling tool. For example, I want it to be teal on the inside. Then I click here and say OK. And now my sprite looks like this petal or droplet. This is kind of big. So I can adjust the size by going to looks and there are two blocks. One is change size by and the other one is set size to. So I can either change the size by 10 if I want to make it bigger or minus 10 if I want to make it smaller. So I can say change the size by minus 10 and then it gets smaller each time I click the block or I can just say set the size to 30% then it will set the size to 30% immediately. This is kind of small, let's do 40 maybe. Okay, so now I have a petal in the right size. So what I want to do now is I want to stamp this on the stage. You can find blocks in different categories in Snap. Um, the one we're going to use now is the pen category, which is all about drawing and stamping things on the stage. So at the bottom, you can find the stamp block which when I drag it over and click it, will stamp my costume onto the stage. So this is the original costume and the original sprite. And this here I can't drag because that's just something that was stamped on the stage. And stamp it again, stamp it again, stamp it again. So this is how the stamp block works, but this is not how a flower looks like. It's more like a windy and rainy thunderstorm, so we're going to remove that by using the clear block. This one's really important for every drawing that you're going to make throughout this course because it just removes everything that is drawn on the stage. So everything is gone now except my original sprite that I will use to stamp the flower now. 
So besides the stamp block, I also want to turn the petal so I can make a full flower. So let's take the turn 15 block and then just click that sprite multiple, uh, that script multiple times so we can create a flower. What you see here now is that the petal is not turning around its end, but it's rotating around its center. This is not how a flower works. So we go back to the costumes and then say right click, edit, and go to the rotation center. And here we can adjust the rotation center and we want it to be at the top or bottom of our petal, wherever you like it. I will just put it here and then say OK. And when we run the exact same script now, you see that there's a difference because now we are rotating around the bottom of the petal. So I don't want to click as many times to, to fill the circle, so there must be a way to automate that. And guess what? There is. In the control category, you can find different blocks to control the flow of your script. So for example, a repeat block, um, which is a loop that executes the things inside over and over again, as often as indicated here in the input. So when I put that one in here, it will stamp and turn 10 times. Let's just do that. Yeah, this will only make half a circle, so we can check how much we need for the full flower. So let's do that. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 20, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24. So it's 24 for the full circle. So we can just say repeat 24 and it should do the same thing. Great. So that worked. But what about if my flower shouldn't have 24 petals, but only eight? How can I find out what's the angle that I need to input here? So repeat 24 is probably wrong. I would need to do repeat eight because I want to have eight petals, but I don't know what the angle is that I need to turn. So I will just start with um, a script that will draw a two-petaled flower. So when I do turn 360 degrees, you should, shouldn't see anything because 360 degrees is the full circle, so the petal will just stop at the same position as it was before. So when I do 180 degree, which is a half circle, then you see that it just swaps the sides. So when I want to do a petal, a flower with two petals, I just say turn 180 degrees and then stamp. So I stamp the original one, then turn, and then stamp again, and then turn again, so I'm in the original position. Let's try that. That worked. So this is my two-petaled flower. Two is kind of not that much, so we might want to make a flower that has, for example, four petals. And then, of course, I don't need to turn 180 degrees, but only half the number of degrees, which is 90. Let's try that. Worked as well. So this is our four-petaled flower. Let's do the same thing with eight. So I want to repeat eight times because it should be eight petals. And then I only need to do half the degrees, so 45. Let's check it. Yes, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Here's our eight petaled flower. So how can we find out what number of degree we need to turn for each petal? It's 360 degrees if we want to make one. It's twice 180 if we want to make two. It's four times 90 if we want to make four. So it's always the the number of degrees that you turn is 360, the full circle divided by the number of petals that you want to have in your flower. So what we can do now is that we can just use this um, operator as an input for our turn block. So we say always turn 360 divided by the number that we have in here, in this case, eight. When we clear now, this should make an eight petaled flower again. Great. But we can also say, I want to try 10, and I also want to do 10 in here. Now we should get 10. Or I can say 3 is my favorite number. I want to make 3. 
this also works. So you can always find out what angle you need to turn by just um, dividing 360 through by the number of petals or repeats that you have. So this is kind of nice, but for a flower field, um, we would want more differences. So we want different flowers in different sizes. And I have some ideas how you can do that. So the first one would be go to looks and check out the change effect block. This block has um, an input field as well, but here you cannot just input things like in the ones with the white background, but you can choose from the drop down menu. So here's the small arrow that you can click and you cannot only have a ghost effect, which makes things more transparent, but for example, also a color effect, which changes the color of your costume. When I click that once, you can see that my costume now changed its color. When I click that again, changes the color again, again, until I get back to the original one. You can change the speed or the, the number of changes that you can have until the original one comes back by changing the number here. So for example, when I say only change the effect by 10, it will take more turns until it comes back to the original color. So now I can say I want to draw multiple flowers on the stage in different colors. So for example, I want to make five petaled flowers and then I change the color effect every time by 10. So when I click that script, it will draw a five petaled flower and then change the color. Do that again and again and again and again. And I could also automate that by just nesting another loop around that. So I already used the repeat five for the flower. Now I want to make multiple flowers. So I just say, do the whole thing 10 times. If I click that now, it will draw flower over flower over flower on top of the next flower on top of the next flower and all that 10 times. So that's nice, but on a flower field, not all flowers um, grow at the same spot. So what we want to do now is we want to change the spot. So we can go to a random position every time and then draw the flower there and then move to another random position, draw a flower and then move to another random position and so on and so forth. For that, we can go to a random position. So if I click that block, it just moves your sprite to a random position on the stage. So if I add that to my script, right now it's drawing a five petaled flower and then changing the color. When I add that in front, it goes to a random position, draws the flower and then changes the color. So when I put that into the repeat 10, it will draw me 10 flowers at random positions. Let's clear the stage and check that. Great. I can also try the color effect again, or we can in increase the number here. Let's say we want to do 15 now. So we can draw different colored um, flowers on our stage. So the next thing we could do on a flower field, there's normally not only one flower species, but there are multiple ones. So we can just go to costume and say, I want to draw another petal, not just the droplet like that I already have, but there's also one that looks like a chicken feet. So I draw a chicken feet petal, which looks like that. Okay, chickens only have three toes. Anyway, and then I can fill it again. And then here you can see that my um, petal now looks different. When I do the same thing now, it will draw flowers with the new petal. Again, here we can adjust the rotation point by clicking edit and then say rotation point to the bottom. Clear again, try that again. Now we can draw new flowers. And we can also switch between the flowers because in the looks category, you can find a block that lets you choose the next costume. So this is our original sprite and it has the chicken feet petal costume now. And if I click 
on the next costume it will wear the droplet original one and then again the next costume and the next costume and if you have more than two it will loop through all the costumes and then when it's finished it will just start at the beginning again. So what we can do now is we can also say after you change the color also go to the next costume so we draw different flowers every time we draw one. Let's try that. So that kind of looks like a flower field. You can now experiment with different angles, with different petals, with multiple um, petals, with multiple angles and so on and so forth. You can try different colors. Um, go and explore the looks, the motion and the pen category and try to find out what you can do with the blocks and experiment a little bit. And that brings us already to the end of our first unit. Before we want to start with the next video, I want to show you how you can save your projects. So now I'm really fine with my flower field and I like that a lot. So I want to save the project and also maybe share it with my grandma or something for Mother's Day. So in Snap you have different um, yeah, possibilities to save your scripts. One is you just register for a cloud account by clicking on the cloud menu on top, say sign up and then you can enter a username, birth date, email address. Um, here you can also read our terms of service and privacy settings. And then if you say OK, we will create you a cloud account where you can save your projects. I have one, so I will just log in into mine and show you how that looks like. So now I'm logged in and now I can go to the file menu and just say save. And this will open my cloud menu here, all my projects. And now I can say I want to save this project as flower field because it's a flower field. And now it's saved. And I can, if I want to open it again, I can go to the file menu and say open. And if I search for flower, I can now find my flower field. And here you can see it's the original project that I just saved. Next thing that you can do is if you don't want to register for a cloud account, you can just click the sheet of paper, um, the file menu and say export project. Now my project will be exported to the downloads folder of my computer. I can just say right click show in finder. This is the downloads ordner, uh, folder of my computer and here you can see that my project is in the downloads folder. Um, if I go back to um, my browser, I can say import and then I can go to Downloads and say Open Flower Field and it will open the project again. Or I can just go to the um, Downloads and can drag it back into my browser. So these are the two possibilities that you have to save your projects. Um, you see, it's not that difficult and it can be a lot of fun. Have a go at the exercise that we've provided for you and let us know how you're getting on in the discussion forum. We're here to help you. Have fun and see you next time. Another thing I wanted to tell you is how you can share your projects. We just saved our great flower field and now I want to make it accessible for everyone who also likes flowers. For that, you can go to the file menu and go to save as and search for your flower field. Or I can just search like that. Here you can see that I have some projects written in bold. These are the ones I already shared and the other ones I can still share. So I click on the flower field and click here on the bottom on the share button. Take a look at that link up here and you will see it change now. So when I hit share, it asks me if I'm sure that I want to share that project and if I say yes now, it will create a shareable link that now contains my username and also my project name. Now I can say cancel and if I copy that link and go to an another tab, I can enter that link and I will get to my new or to my saved project in full screen. When you leave the full screen, you can also access the script again. So please feel free to share all your projects with us um, to spread the news and show your great successes. Thanks.